Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine Kaur. I'm a PhD student at Triple IT Delhi and I'm your TA for the course VLSI Design Flow RTL to GDS. Welcome to tutorial 12. In the last tutorial, we have looked at the various steps of chip planning, including uh, the floor planning and power planning. Now, after that, uh, we also looked at the uh, placement step. And now in this tutorial, we will look at the next steps of physical design that are clock tree synthesis and routing. And uh, also after that, we will perform parasitic extraction. In the previous tutorial, we looked at this GCD NAND gate copy.tickle file. So uh, again in this, uh, in this, I have created two subscripts in which uh, in one strict script, I will be performing clock tree synthesis and the second step, script uh, is that for the complete flow from the clock tree synthesis and then the global routing and detailed routing step. So let us look first look at the clock tree synthesis step. So in uh, these firstly these are the uh, steps that we already did in the last tutorial and now we will uh, start with clock tree synthesis. So in this firstly we uh, repair the clock inverters. So this basically clones the clock tree inverters next to the resistor loads so that CTS doesn't try to buffer the inverted clocks. Now we are performing the clock tree synthesis and here we give the uh, list of buffers and the sync clustering is enabled here and the diameter for sync clustering is given. Then we repair the clock nets. This is because uh, when we perform clock tree synthesis, there may be long wires from the uh, pad to the clock tree root. So we need to uh, insert buffers in these long wires. So this is, uh, next we are doing this uh, detailed placement. So placement of these clock buffers that are, uh, uh, that are uh, placed in this clock tree synthesis. And then finally we are uh, creating uh, DB files. Then we perform setup hold timing repair. Now after the clock tree synthesis, we have actual latencies and actual timing of the clocks. So we need to again check the setup and hold and repair the design. So firstly, what we are doing is we are estimating the parasitics here. So either we can do that using global routing or we can just estimate on the basis of the placement. But since global routing is not fast enough for production use, so we will be uh, using placement based parasitic estimation. And after uh, we have the parasitics, we will perform uh, repair timing. So in this, the setup and hold violations are repaired by in, uh, you downsizing of the cells or using high VT cells. Then we are report, uh, reporting the different uh, timing reports, the worst slack for hold and setup time and total negative slack and other things. Now after that, we will perform detailed placement after after we have done the resizing and we have uh, placed the uh, CTS uh, con clock tree synthesis. Then we are here uh, uh, creating DB files and writing a very log file. Now we will run this. So this is uh, how the layout looks after the uh, clock tree synthesis step. So let us see in this uh, instances, we have this clock tree option. So here we can see that the instances that are inserted after the clock tree synthesis. So the, this is, we can see this is a clock buffer. So all these cells that are here are the clock buffer cells that are inserted in the clock tree synthesis step. 
now uh, we can uh, see the clock tree using this clock tree viewer that is there in this windows tab and pressing this update button we can see the clock tree of the 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 fly lines of the clock tree so this is coming from the clock pin and going to these this buffer and this main buffer is supplying the uh, clocks to the uh, these four buffers and, and the finally that goes to the sequential cells here also we can see this is the uh, clock pin going to the one buffer and then that is given to the four buffers and then finally to the standard cells the next step let us look at the next step of routing so we will source this flow.tickle file in the uh, script file that we are using so gedit flow.tickle file in this so the first step here is global routing so uh, in this firstly we are giving the pin access uh, so here we uh, define the routing layers for the uh, for accessing the pins of the standard cells then we are setting the route guide uh, output file and finally we perform the global routing here we perform the global routing and the number of congestion iterations to check for uh, congestion overflow is 100 here then we set the verilog file uh, write the verilog file for the global routing step here we are checking the antennas uh, any antenna violations are there and uh, after that we do the filler placement so uh, the filler cells are placed in this step and then we check for the uh, legality of the placement of these filler cells if they are uh, legal or not then here we are writing the db file then the next step is deta detailed routing in this again we are uh, giving the uh, routing layers for the pin access then uh, we are doing detailed routing for this we have we are first uh, using the set thread count to find the number of processors and uh, uh, available uh, the number of processors available so the detailed routing step will be done parallelly in with uh, in multiple multi thread uh, option and then this is a detailed routing step in which we are giving these different options we are generating the output drc file and the different options are given here that you can look at then we are writing the guides file and then again we are checking the antenna violations if there are any antenna violations and here we don't have any antenna in there will be no antenna violations in our design so if there are any antenna violations we can uh, repair that using a repair design option and then we are uh, writing the db and def files then final step is parasitic extraction to find the uh, rc values so for that firstly we need to have a rc uh, file um, and that is given in the NAND gate 45 library uh, uh, folder and in that we uh, are extracting the parasitics and then writing the standard parasitic extraction format file if we uh, don't have these rc files then we estimate the parasitics based on the global routing and after we have these parasitics we generate the final reports in which uh, we generate the reports for worst slack for hold and setup total negative slack and different reports for uh, different uh, paths are generated here and we are checking uh, reporting the power the clock skew the floating nets and the design area so to run this
so this is the layout that is generated after the complete flow so here we can uh, see for the signal nets the routing is done or not using this signal nets option firstly let us include the instances as well and uh, i've just taken the standard cells and now this, these are the signal routes that are going from the signal nets that are going from the pins to the different cells right and then these are the clock nets these are the clock nets So these are all the the complete uh, layout again with the power and ground nets then in instances uh, let us check for these filler cells that we included so these are the filler cells that are included in the design everywhere they are included So these are the different op options that you can explore. Then in this heat maps option, we can look at the placement density. So we can say the dark blue area is the where the density is more. This is the power density. So the red areas are having uh, more power. This is the routing congestion, right? and then we can see the clock tree view here so this was all about race tutorial so we have covered the complete physical design flow and you can look at the different scripting commands that i use and their options in the open road github i will provide you with this uh, the link to this and uh, that's all for today. Thank you.